Hello, <laughs> thanks for joining us at the Barnsley Chronicle, where I'm joined by sports editor Doug O'Kane. We're going to preview Barnsley's second leg playoff match against Bolton Wanderers. Here's a snippet of Michael Duff's press conference ahead of the second leg against Bolton Wanderers at Oakwell. Five or ten percent more from the, the Bolton games. Is part of that sort of slightly more clinical finishing? I don't think there was a, a massive sit in this on Saturday, but maybe just a couple of times when their keeper made a good save, they could just been slightly more clinical and, and good chances. Uh, well, I think the fact that the goalkeeper got man of the match probably tells you everything. So, did anyone miss a sit? No, but he's made some good saves. Um, but you, you just want that, that extra little bit. You know, I know Ian said he wasn't particularly happy with the first half and they, they were better in the second half than they were. Um, so yeah, we're both teams will be looking to improve on, on the performance because the margins are really small now. Yeah, I think Ian Everett said Bolton had something like 60 or 70 more percent that they could have given. Maybe that's a bit of an exaggeration. I don't know, but you're expecting more from them uh, tomorrow night than, than you saw on Saturday? Um, I'm, I'm not really bothered about that about Bolton, we, we give a good account of ourselves. What, if they, if they think they've got 60 or 70 percent, that's no problem. We we know our jobs, we know what we have to do. Um, we're going to have to play well against a good team. So, yeah, but percentages and all that sort of stuff, it's, can we deliver a good performance? Can the crowd turn up and, and fire the players on as well? That, that that will hopefully help us, but we need to, uh, need to take our chances and score some goals. How much is it about just obviously you can you can prepare them lots uh, you know and they obviously uh, tactically it's worked really well but it's just sort of holding that nerve in, in key moments I suppose just do what you do every day that's 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 the key that's the when I talked about last week about momentum and all this sort of stuff I see them work every day so we don't don't we don't rely on the players just being able to just turn it on and off when they want to oh put your you know put your flip flops on till Friday. We'll have a short, sharp session Friday and then rock up on a Saturday at 3 o'clock or Friday, whatever time it is. It's, these are byproducts of your environment. The lads work hard every day. They know their jobs every day. Who Can you execute it? Can you be the one to be a hero? Well, Doug, um, 90 minutes being played, 90 minutes to go as a minimum. Uh, would you say it's advantage Barnsley at this stage? Yeah, probably. Just just but only by a tiny bit. It's still, obviously, a really closely balanced game. Um, we thought before the first leg, that, was, that game sort of proved us right, really. Um, although I thought Barnsley was slightly the better team, we'll be a bit disappointed not to come away with a, a win, both with a few chances they missed and the goal that they conceded. And then because they played well and the fact that they're coming into the home game and they did finish above Bolton in the league, I think for all those reasons, you have to make the Reds slight favourites uh, for Friday. But it's the playoffs, it's very finely balanced. Anything could happen. Yeah. What was your analysis of, of the first leg? I thought Barnsley played really well. They, um, they had a good game plan. They looked a bit nervous to me in the first 15 minutes and Bolton had a couple of chances. But after that, I thought they were the best side. Um, like I said, probably should have, should have won it really. Um, they they were very compact and well organised off the ball and sort of stopped Bolton playing their normal style. But they're not on the ball. They put some good moves together and, and attacked and played with a bit of flair. And we're just a, a bit unlucky not not to score. Like I said, they um, just need to be ever so slightly more clinical because I don't think Bolton are going to give up loads of big chances. They might just have to find a good finish like they did with Nicky Cadden, but then unfortunately made a bit of a mistake. Um, the goalkeeper for the uh, for the equaliser, but. Yeah, generally, um, I thought it was a it was a good, intelligent game plan, well executed by a team that looked really up for it and uh, played well. Also, a good chance for you to, to have a good look at Bolton. Where where would you say their strengths and weaknesses were? Yeah, they looked solid at the back. Um, I think Santos, the centre back, came back in after an injury, and he, he was uh, you know made a lot of clearances. Um, they did look a little bit hesitant sometimes, sort of when Barnsley got the ball in, in the box. So maybe that is something that Oakwell might be. Uh, might be capitalised on a bit more. Um, I don't think we probably saw their, their, all their strengths re really, because like I said, they didn't play at their best and Barnsley, Barnsley did, did well against them in the manager Ian Everts, Everts so they got 70% more to give, which uh, if that's true, that could be a problem for Barnsley, but whether it's a bit of an exaggeration, I don't know. They did well on the wings at times. Um, the left wing back um, did well, the Randall Williams did well for the for the goal and there were a couple of other chances where they, they had to get the ball wide because there was no space in the middle and they, they put some decent crosses in. Um, so, But that only happened a few times and hopefully Barnes, from Barnes' point of view they can get to grips with that on, on Friday night. Yeah. 
In terms of the picking the starting eleven, probably going to be Michael Duff's uh, toughest up one of the season. What do you think he's going to do? It's interesting. I don't think anyone necessarily deserves to lose their place. Um, uh, but I think if any if anywhere is going to change, I, I can't see the central. I might be wrong, but I can't see the central three changing or the back three or, or the wing backs. They've pretty much been set in stone for six months or so. Um, forward forwards wise is the only thing they could do. Although Tedic, Sobers and Tedic played well, I, I thought on Saturday were a little bit of a surprise call, but he started. I wonder whether he might go with Norwood and Cole up front again, possibly, but. It's, it's really hard to tell. Him. Duff wasn't giving up, uh, giving much away on uh, on uh, the press conference this week. So uh, yeah, he, he's got a lot of lot of uh, quite a big squad to choose from with uh, quite a few options. So yeah, we could see a, a change up front. In goal, I can't see a change either. Even though I, Harry Ister did make a mistake, I, I don't see it being dropped at this point. I might be wrong. And Brad Collins is a good goalkeeper, but I just think that would be a bit harsh to drop him after after that error. Even though it was a disappointing one. Lots of rallying cries this week from the club and, uh, and from, from Michael Duff himself. Obviously, it's a sellout. I mean, you expecting a uh, raucous atmosphere? I think so, yeah. We've had some good atmospheres there uh, in 2023, especially after a bit of a quiet start to the season. You know, obviously, references to games like against Derby and, and Plymouth, and especially Sheffield Wednesday a couple of months ago when it was, it was really good atmosphere. It probably won't be. The same as that in terms of the, uh, the away end isn't as big, but they've capped it at 2,000, so it uh, um, won't be as, as much of a noise from that stand and there's no home fans in there. So it'll be about 15,500, 16,000, I think, unless there's there's some, some change. Um, but yeah, it, um, that'll be the attendance. But I think in terms of home fans, that will be loads in there and hopefully make a big noise. And obviously, there's a lot on the line. Lots of news at oh well this week. Uh, obviously, we've got the... Uh, the stand being renamed after after a club legend um, and uh, the, the female team uh, and the 18s as well. So there's a lot going off down at Hotwell. Yeah, it's been a really good season, hasn't it? Really, whatever happens with um, you know, a lot of positivity and changes happening, really. The, the women's team, it's um, it's not a new team. Obviously, the Barnsley FC ladies have been played there, but it looks like they're going to... The de exact details haven't come out yet, but it's, it looks like they're going to be more professional, train more... Um, we don't know exactly about how many people are going to be contracted and what that kind of situation is, but um, it looks like there will be a more professional aspect to that, which is great. And a first in Barnsley, and hopefully they can go on and go quite high in the leagues as well. Um, and then the under-18s are in their playoff final on Saturday. And then, and then as well, we've got the return of the Barnsley Sunday League finals on uh, to Oakwell on Sunday. So there's a lot going on and quite quite a few uh, you know changes and positive steps forward, which fans have been calling for a while. And a fitting tribute to, to Norman Remington as well to have uh, the popular the uh, the Pontian named after him. Yeah, uh, definitely You've got the Barry Murphy one at the the other side as well. Um, I think that was announced a, a few months ago, but they've they've got the sign up now. So yeah, it's uh, hopefully that'll be uh, in full voice on Friday night. Good stuff. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel, and you'll be updated when we've got new content.